Hello and welcome to this week's episode of The Shooting Show. On this week's episode, we join Mark Ripley, who's out first of all for some squirrels, pigeons and some rabbits. And then we join Thomas Nissan somewhere in a tent in Sweden, getting ahead of some fallow stalking with the Hunt and Hike twins. That's because I'm in a tent in Sweden. I've been invited by the Hunt and Hike twins to follow them on a fellow stalk up here. It's a little damp outside. Right now it's actually raining, but hope it will clear a bit during the day. The two girls has told me that they had not brought any meat for this camp. We only have potatoes and bread. And if we don't get a fellow, that's what the menu will be. So I hope we'll get some kind of fellow deer during the day. So that an old guy like me can get more than just vegetables. I want my meat. But uh, so far the girls are over here behind me. There. Good morning, girls. Good morning. <laughs> What is the plan? The plan is to get dressed. Okay. okay we're not going to show that on camera. Yes. And then we're going to go out Ooh. and uh, hunt some fellow deers. We're very excited. We just have to uh, get dressed really quickly. Yeah. We are allowed to shoot both both hinds and calves, fallow deers, and also uh, spikers and mature bucks. Um, so hopefully we're gonna we're gonna see some of them and shoot, because uh, it's a major problem here in this area. Uh, also because of the populations are pretty high, and they're doing a lot of damage uh, on the ground. So yeah, it's gonna be great.
We are back in camp, the camp where we went out from this morning, the hunt and hike tent camp. And uh, it's been an exciting morning with a lot of action. We have seen quite a lot of animals in the afternoon. I'm sure it will get much better, but for now we will have a little cup of coffee and maybe a little toast. I'm looking forward to that. And then a bonfire to warm the fingers. It's a little cold here in Sweden right now. Oi, what now it's the... coffee time. Yes. Cheers. Thank you. You're welcome. This is an afternoon stock and the plan is Since that Trina didn't shoot anything. <laughs> <laughs> so the plan is that we're gonna uh, stalk into uh, some fallow deers and uh, I'm gonna shoot, we're gonna eat and then go to bed early. So that's the plan. now and we are we can shoot one hour after sunset and right now we are staying in the same place to uh, see if any fellow days comes out during uh, during this uh, late time We are about to have a baked potato because we didn't shoot anything today so we are going vegetarian and there is a long way for the nearest town so we have to deal with this. So mm. Thomas is pretty pleased with this. <laughs> yes, <laughs> this is a nice meal. We uh, ate our potato and we went to bed very we are fulfilled for today, but we hope we're gonna have a fellow day tomorrow. Um, so we're gonna try it again and see what happens tomorrow. We're excited, but now we're gonna have a great sleep. Good night. Good night. So we just saw some fellow deers and we went up close but it's not our ground area so so now we just keep on looking and hopefully they will stand on the right side. <laughs>
done. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Finally. Maybe you should tell how it went. Yeah. Uh, will we have meat today? We will have then meat today. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> Thomas, he's a very happy man right now. So we <laughs> we have been eating candy for for quite some time now. So we now it's meat on the bonfire. Yeah, it's gonna be great. Okay, Rikke, while uh, Trina is guarding the animal, can you tell us a little about the area we are in here in Sweden? Yeah, we are in the south of Sweden. Um, it's uh, near the, the biggest lake in, in Sweden uh, called Vena, and exactly the, the third biggest lake here in Europe. So um, here in this area there's a big population of uh, fellow deer and also uh, pigs wild boars and um, so it's a really nice uh, nice place to hunt and because uh, there is so much activity and Trina and I has 200 um, acres square acres up here so we have a lot of places to go and hunt up here <laughs> Yes, I am. Great. Can I have something to eat before? Yeah, you will have the tenderloins. Yeah, oh Is I that agree. okay? Yes, please. Great. So now we have the tenderloin ready. Ready for the bonfire. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, Hope you. you enjoyed it. I did. And uh, we say farewell from Sweden. Cheers. Cheers. Nice. Some great stalking there from Rika and Trina. Next up, we join Mark Ripley, who's out after some feral pigeons but not before going after the local squirrel population and trying to get ahead of the booming rabbit numbers. Let's see how he gets on. You may recall a little while back, I did a little video um, shooting feral pigeons here in these barns. Well, uh, they were coming in and they were getting in underneath the roof in the barn just opposite the one I'm in at the moment. Now, uh, the farmer came along and he put some timber over the uh, over the opening so they can't get into that bit of roof but they've now started dropping in at the other end they're very persistent these pigeons so um, I thought I'd come down here for a couple of hours this morning and just see if I could sort of discourage them a little bit so I've got the uh, Brocock sniper here with me and uh, I've set it to the lowest power setting because we're only about 20 meters away from the corner of the roof where they land before they drop in so I'm hoping I can just knock over one or two and stop them getting into that barn. Now, as you can probably see, they've had some work going on around the barns so here. have been doing some concreting and stuff and reflooring some of the uh, some of the barn areas. And they've left this screen set up here. It makes for a brilliant little hide. And obviously the pigeons are used to seeing this now. But if I stand here, I can shoot through the opening and. Uh, hopefully knock over one or two as they land. I have to be very careful though because although the gun's turned down to the lowest power setting it's still doing around about 33 foot pound I think so um, it'll still damage that barn roof so I need to be very careful of that and make sure that I only shoot them when they're on the top and I've got the open fields out behind.
So it went a little bit quiet on the ferals there. I managed to knock down a couple, but after that, they uh, soon got wise to that, I think, and they've stopped dropping in there. So um, I've just walked around the back of one of the barns here, which backs onto the wood. And I'm just going to have a little look here and uh, see if I'm finding any, um, any squirrels out in this wood. I've shoot quite a lot in here, but uh, it's good just to keep on top of them. So I'm going to have a little wander around and see if I find another one. Well, I literally walked about 10 yards from the barn and straight away I spotted a squirrel out just on the edge of the wood there. Now, um, I didn't have anything to lean on where I was stood and I didn't want to move too much because I thought it might spook it. It was just sat there for a little while. So I literally just took a freehand shot of that and that was about 40... Actually, I can tell you how far it was. Uh, it was 39 yards, or metres I should say, so just over 40 yards. Um, and yeah, it's gone straight over in the bushes there, so I'll walk over and pick that one up. And uh, I'll have a little look around, see if there's any more out and about. So there's one or two squirrels moving around on the floor of this wood here and uh, I found myself quite a nice little branch to rest the rifle on and hopefully get a shot of one before too long. I just spotted that squirrel, thanks to the thermal imager. It was sat in a tree just up there in the via the uh, branches. Uh, he was uh, about 40 metres up there. And um, yeah, just sat there watching me, knew full well I was here. But it gave me all the time in the world just to rest against this tree and get a shot up through there. And uh, he just dropped straight down the bottom trunk of that tree. There we go, little squirrel. Again, smashed him hard with that 0.25 pellet. Another one down. Well, we've had a good morning this morning. We managed to knock down a couple of squirrels and a few feral pigeons with the Brocock Sniper. Um, you'll see I'm using the Element Helix scope on there, and this little gadget on the back here is a trigger cam, which is what I've been using to record the through the foot uh, through the scope footage. Um, this morning and um, what I'm going to do is this evening I'm going to take this set up out um, after a few rabbits I've got a little strip of, uh, of hedgerow that's got quite a few rabbits um, on there that the farmers asked me to, to go and sort out so I'll kit the Brocock sniper out with the um, Hick Micro Cheetah night vision add-on and we'll take it out and see if we knock over a couple of bunnies with it This evening I am out after a few rabbits. I've got with me the Brocock Sniper yet again. I do like this little rifle. And um, I've been asked by the farmer to come and have a look at this little hedgerow in front of me here. And uh, he's asked me to just clear up a few of the rabbits along there. I came and had a look yesterday, there was probably about 20 rabbits out there. So there's a few there for a, a little bit of sport with the air rifle. So this is actually a really good location for shooting a few rabbits and I've also shot quite a few foxes from here before as well. Now before you think I've completely flipped my lid and lost the plot and bought a Sherman tank, no this is not an old rusty tank, this is in fact a water tower and uh, this is conveniently the inspection hatch and uh, there's a little ladder here which I'm sat on and this makes for an excellent little sniping position. Now the plan is to sit here until dusk and see if I can knock over one or two rabbits uh, just with the day scope at last light and then uh, once the light starts to fade I've got the Hick Micro Cheetah which I'll put on the front of the scope and hopefully knock over a few more and I can even have a little walk out there as well and uh, see if I can get some of the ones that are a little bit too far for the air rifle. So 
So the first rabbit has already come out. It's about 150 metres down the fence line there. So too far for a shot with this, especially in this wind, as you can probably hear, there's about a 15 to 20 mile an hour wind, which is kind of coming down this way. Got about five rabbits out now. That's still a bit far. There's one actually a little bit closer. It's 107 metres, so still uh, a bit further than um, I want to push the broke up this evening. Ideally, I want them not much further than about 75, 80 yards. Uh, but we'll see. Hopefully, get one or two come out a bit closer. So I've managed to knock over a couple of closer ones that have come out, but the rest are all still staying a good sort of, I don't know, 100 yards or more um, down the bottom there, about 110 yards I think the closest one was, or metres I should say, from where I am at the moment. So I think I'm just going to walk along this hedgerow and have a look, see if I can get a bit closer and knock over a couple more. So I'm just going to hop these rabbits, which we do by just literally cutting a slot in the leg, which goes uh, between the tendon on the back here and the bone. And you cut a slot about an inch and a half long or so, push that leg through like so, and then you can hook them over the fence posts or as I'm going to do here, I'm just going to put that through the fence. that hung there and that way no fox ring is going to get that and drag that off too easily. Right, let's uh, have a look for some more. Oh, a good size rabbit that. Nice healthy looking bunnies. Just a few more out in the field that have uh, They've kind of come away from the hedgerow and I think they're just hunkering down so hopefully I'll be able to walk along here a little bit and shoot back out into the field. just goes to show what this rifle's capable of. There was two rabbits there, both pretty close to one another, both at about 75, 80 yards, and this thing just absolutely pole-axed them. That 0.25 bullet, pellet I should say, not bullet, it's acting like a bullet, but that 0.25 pellet is just smacking them so hard and just killing them instant. 
So uh, a good place shot with this, and um, that's it. They're uh, they're brown bread. Right, well, I've had a pretty good evening this evening. Uh, there's another couple to add to the bag, so I'm going to walk up along the fence line here and um, pick up the rest of them. I've got another seven or eight, eight I think it is, along there. Um, so I walk along there and grab them, being sure to carry them all in the right direction. Yes, there is a wrong and a right way if you carry them that way with the bellies showing. That's like a warning beacon to any other rabbits as you're walking along. So uh, always carry them with the back fur facing the way you're walking. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the episode anyway, and thanks for watching, and please subscribe. Some great shooting there from Mark. Sadly, that's all we've got time for on this week's episode of The Shooting Show. Make sure you like and subscribe for more videos, and if you're not a member of Basque, now's the time to do so. My name's Chris Castle, and this has been The Shooting Show. If you aren't a member of Basque, it's time to join now. Basque, looking after your sport, looking after you.